Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslow here. And what we got today is we're gonna be overclocking this 1660 Ti for Ethereum mining. So let me just put you guys down here so you can see what I'm seeing on the screen. And let's get started. So let's fire up MSI Afterburner. And the first thing I always do is I take the fan off of auto and I put that to 80%. And we can hear the fan spin up there, that's good. Now I'm gonna open up the miner, which I'm using T-Rex miner today, but that's just personal preference. And as that starts mining, there are three things that I need to go over with you first. And those are three things to keep in mind when overclocking. So the first thing is, you have to take into account that overclocking is done at your own risk, you know? When we are overclocking, we're doing things to these cards that the manufacturer did not intend for us to do. So just keep that in mind. The second thing to keep in mind is that the numbers that I get today won't necessarily work for you even if you have the exact same version of the exact same card you know just due to the fact that all of these cards are unique and they're individual so my numbers won't necessarily work for your card and the third thing is that when i'm overclocking for mining i'm trying to optimize for getting the highest stable hash rate i can get you might want to optimize for getting the most efficient settings as in you might want to try to get the best hash rate to power usage ratio if that makes sense so just keep in mind i'm optimizing for high hash rate not high efficiency but yeah with that out the way it seems we've settled at around 25.49 mega hash and that is using stock settings so the first thing i always do is i just take our memory clock and i slam that all the way down to negative 502 just to see what happens all right so this is interesting i actually got a slight well not slight actually a significant increase in hash rate by doing that so we're up from 25.49 mega hash to 26.37 mega hash from slamming the memory clock down. So, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave that there, and I'm gonna slam the core clock down. And let's see what that gives us. So I got both the memory clock and the core clock at negative 502 right now. All right, so it actually seems to have settled at around 26.45 mega hash a second with both the memory clock and the core clock slammed down to negative 502. However, I do think we should be able to get more than 26 and a half mega hash out of this card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take core clock, I'm gonna put that back to zero, and I'm gonna take our memory clock, and I'm gonna increase that. So I'm gonna start working my way up on the memory clock. So what I usually do is I do one big jump to start out with. So I'm gonna go plus 500 on the memory clock. And I'm gonna see what that gets us. All right, so thankfully we seem to have settled in at a higher hash rate here. So we're at 27.94 mega hash a second now with our memory clock at 500 and our core clock at zero. So I'm gonna do another pretty big jump on our memory clock. Let's go to, let's, let's, let's do 900 and then we'll start doing 100 jumps from there. So let's just see if it's all good with 900. All right, so we seem to have settled at around 29.83 mega hash now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing some quick, smaller jumps. So let's start by going 950 and see if we get a crash. Just give that 30 seconds or so. So that seems good. Let's go 1000. All right, this seems fine too. So I'm gonna, since we're getting up there now on the memory clock, we're at 1000 already. I'm gonna start doing even smaller jumps. So let's do 1,025, see what happens. We're currently at 30.08 mega hash a second, by the way. Yeah, that seems fine too. So let's 
Try a thousand and fifty. Whoa. And that crashed on us immediately. So, okay. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna dial us back down to a thousand on the memory clock. But let's just see how the computer recovers first. And we're back. So that was a really hard crash, you guys. Uh, I had to uh, reboot the whole system, uh, but we're back. I put the memory clock down to plus a thousand and it seems to be holding steady there now. We're at around 30.19 mega hash a second. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start moving our core clock around instead. So I'm gonna start by moving that up to plus 200 and we'll see if that does anything. Oh, and we actually got a crash there. I wonder if that's from the core clock. Let's put that back down to plus 100. All right, I'm gonna let that run for a bit and I'll check back with you guys in a minute. All right, so I lowered the core clock to plus 100 and we seem to be steady now at around 30.32 mega hash a second, but I wanna try something. We did get a little increase in mega hash by going up to plus 100 from zero on the core clock, but I'm gonna pull it all the way down and see what happens there. Because remember in the beginning we pulled everything all the way down and that actually increased our hash rate a little bit. So let's see what we can get by lowering our core clock now. All right, so that actually seems to have done something because we are now getting 30.50 mega hash a second. So I'm just gonna leave the core clock down all the way at negative 502 and let's start pulling on the power limit. So we're currently at 100%. And that gives us around 130 watts being pulled at the wall. And that is including the computer as well, it's not just the GPU. So let me pull the power limit down to 90% and let's see what that does. We're still at around 129 watts at the wall. So let's see if it affects our hash rate in any way. Nope, no real change in our hash rate, so I'm gonna go... 80% power limit now and let's have a look on the wall all right so we're down to around 122 watts on the wall now and let's see what our hash rate is all right so we seem to have lost maybe an ever so slight amount of hash power we're at 30.44 mega hash a second now down from like 30.48 mega hash a second so i'm gonna keep going and let's do 70% power limit on the wall, we're at 109 watts now, 110, 109 watts, yeah. And that's down from around 122 watts, which we were at uh, with 80% power limit. So let's have a look at our hash rate now. All right, hash rate seems to be holding steady. We're at about 30.40 now, so we've lost maybe 0 0.08 mega hash or so. I'm gonna go 60 on the power limit and let's see what that gets us. So, all right, that brought us down to around 97, 96 watts on the wall. 97 watts on the wall, I'll call it. And let's have a look at our hash rate. So yeah, believe it or not, but our hash rate actually increased somehow. We went down to 60% power limit from 70 and our hash rate shot up to 30.71 mega hash a second. So, I mean, yeah, let's just keep going. Let's pull power limit all the way down to 53% and let's see what happens. So we were at 97 watts at the wall. We're now down to 92 watts at the wall. And let's see what our hash rate does. So yeah, believe it or not, but our hash rate shot up again. It's at 31.04 mega hash a second now. Um, yeah. So, I mean, good. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna call it there. So final settings are 53% power limit, negative 502 on our core clock and plus 1000 on memory clock. And we're pulling around 92, 93 watts at the wall. And that is including the whole system, which the whole system pulls around 40 or 50 watts. So happy with that. Hey, so I was just editing this video and I realized I forgot to mention that, of course, 
after you've overclocked your um, card and you're happy with your settings, what you should always do is, you know, just let it run on those settings for, you know, a day, uh, two days, a week, and just look for, you know, is it getting the odd rejected share here and there? Is it crashing? And then adjust your settings down as applicable to that. And also, do you have a version of this card? If so, please leave your overclocking settings down in the comments and we could sort of build up a little database of, you know, uh, overclock settings. So that's it. Now back to the rest of the video. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you could give it one of these. It really helps out and it means a lot to me. As well as, please subscribe to the channel. I get a lot more mining content coming up really soon. So yeah, subscribe to see that. But that will be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.